Arlene, could you tell us about your program? Uh, my program is the kindergarten progr program at Opagossin, and um, we have five-year-olds who are uh, ready to tackle the Alberta curriculum. It's a first, so we follow the Alberta curriculum quite closely, but we also try to bridge the cultural part of our language ways that we do things for in our families so we try to bridge that and bring it into the classroom we share a lot of our culture um, whether it be Cree, Blackfoot and any other students who we have in our programs we share lots of our our ways and we try to um, incorporate we try to bridge that um, I guess gap that sometimes I think is really missing in our curriculum sometimes we don't focus too much on on where we come from it's more about where uh, we have to be at a certain time with the curriculum <laughs> so we have fun kind of um, trying to figure that out and we've um, an example might be when we do our events or let's say for instance St. Patrick's Day I usually bridge the gap or try to bring it together uh, by comparing Noppy and the Noppy the trickster and Noppy the leprechaun into the classroom so it's kind of a comparison so we say well Noppy does this too you know he does but he does it this way you know so the whole um Thing is through play as well so we had a lot of fun last year when we did um, counting coup we had um, we used coup sticks so uh, when you count coup it's being able to do something without getting caught so we had the head start in the kindergarten classroom uh, watching out for each other and trying to get the coup sticks into it from their classroom and and trying to accumulate the see who could accumulate the most sticks but anyway so we found with the teachers we were um, there was humor there was all kinds of things that were brought into this through play the kids sometimes I think were wondering what's going on but we were like really trying to coach them and guide them through this in the whole event we had a lot of fun we were talking about the times and remembering the times that uh, maybe so-and-so did this, but it was so funny because um, we didn't know. So somebody was hiding in the teepee, and we thought they were all gone out for recess. They were outside for recess, but they weren't. And <laughs> so it was, it was quite an eventful, eventful um, activity. But, yeah, bridging those trying to bring it into the classroom and and through play is another another way to to teach our kids some of our traditional ways i know way back when they used to do counting coup with raiding a camp for horses or whatever so we were using sticks and and uh it was it was cute the kids had fun and and um, I think in the beginning, the teacher brought his class in. We had, didn't have a clue that we thought they were showing us their wonderful work that they were doing in the classroom, but all this time they had an ulterior, mo ulterior motive of taking one of the sticks from us and figuring it out way after was quite hilarious because we were older than they were and, <laughs> and they even told us but we still weren't getting it because they weren't able to say the words properly <laughs> so then from there it all started we were determined to get the stick back so it was cute because we were watching out and seeing when they weren't in the classroom and um, so it really I think helped to um, get the kids thinking you know you've, your environment is really important we always have to take care of things that that mean a lot to us and take care of them by 
not leaving them out in the open and <laughs> so so yeah that was that was just one example we try to do things to where um through dance we have this building better brains program and it's like musical freeze the kids love it what we do is we play a um a powwow cd and we have the kids dance and um, there are actions when we stop the music they have to do the action quickly the kids are always saying when are we playing musical freeze <laughs> they love it <laughs> so um, so yeah doing things like that finding ways to bring whether it's music language when we're reading um, a book if there's animals in the in the book, we will um, use Blackfoot words to identify the animals. Um, we try to to use the language um, more and more. We try to find ways to to bring it into the room. Another thing that we've um, started a couple of years ago was the eye science program through the University of Lethbridge. So when we do the science program, when we do the dinosaur unit, we usually tell them what we know about dinosaurs and what dinosaur was found on the blood reserve so that they have that knowledge of their own, um, what's in their own backyard too, so kind of bringing that to them so that they know. And a lot of, even adults, some of them don't even know that the Mosasaur was found <laughs> near the St. Mary's Dam. So, yeah, so doing that for them, I love finding out the more, I think it's, it's a, a learning lesson for me, always looking, creating an awareness for, for them is uh, a really big part of, of learning and they get excited um, yesterday I was really surprised to find that one of the boys who was in my class last year had a rock in his pocket and he said don't you remember he's in the after school program now don't you remember you gave it to me this little boy has held on to that rock and it's like a part of the science curriculum too and it it really like it it made me feel really good because that rock meant some. He said, it's a special rock. And so he carried that with him. And it probably reminds him of, you know, some of the things that we did in kindergarten when he was, when he was in my classroom. So, and I didn't know about that until just last night. <laughs> so there's things that you find out every day that you don't realize. Like, they're so willing and so open to, to learning. And um, it made me think, you know, it makes me try harder even to want to know more for them and to teach them what I know. So, yeah, I'm not afraid to, to not bring it in because it's, I think, very important for them. And, um, yeah, so that's kind of my, my take on my kindergarten class is try to give them as much learning experiences as as possible and finding ways to bridge our culture and to bring it into the classroom and try new ways to approach the um, curriculum but always looking for ways to like a different take a different take on um, let's say your rhyming you could use the Blackfoot words to, to rhyme as well, you know, not only the English version of it, but so yeah, looking for ways, just always, always keeping your eyes and ears open to, to find new ways and not to limit in any way, like there's always something new, always something there that needs to be discovered, <laughs> it's not... Uh, it's not routine. Every day is a different kind of day. Um, we add on. We're very flexible with with teaching the um, kids new things, especially when it comes to culture. 
because there's always something out there for them to learn and the evolution of, of learning too. Like it doesn't doesn't stop. Once we find out something, it's always it, you can always add on to it so that it makes it more interesting or more appealing to their likes. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much the, the program. And that's why I think um, for me, one of the first things that got me to thinking about teaching kindergarten is uh, being a librarian for 16 years and not having the resources um, written resources. I mean, there's a lot of oral stories, but not having the written resources in the classroom is um, very limited. Um, we have a lot of adult written material, but not um, a whole lot for for children, especially Blackfoot legends and and. There's a lot of Cree legends that I've come across, but I would like to see more Blackfoot material for kids. That would be something that I would like to, to really see more of, and I'm always looking out for anything that, that could um, fit into the, into the curriculum and into the program. I think you may have already answered this, but what are, so what are your students, what is the learning objectives um, in terms of when you go to design your curriculum, what do you want your students to walk away with? It depends on what grade you're teaching and with kindergarten, um, having that respect, getting along with one another, yeah, we've, we've been working really hard with having them understand that sometimes we have different um, feelings. We're not, we don't all feel the same. <laughs> so you might have, let's say, a student in the classroom who is wanting to play a game and they, they're not happy because they're not playing the game the way they want to play the, them to play the game. But then you have another student who has a totally different view of how the game should be played. So there's constant conflict between the kids on how they should play the game. Uh, when they go out for recess to play tag, um, they are all, at first always fighting. So we're trying to get them to be problem solvers, uh, figure out, okay, how can we, where can we meet in the middle so that we're happy about playing the game and understanding all the rules together, not just one set of rules. So there's that part where you're really trying to get them to get along together, be, um, but be responsible problem solvers in the, in the world, I guess. This, this is their first experience. Some of them are just coming from home and not having any kind of social experience. So it's a first, and first impressions are usually pretty uh, big. <laughs> so you're trying to steer them into this, um, into this way of, of getting along, um, and understanding that other people have different ways of thinking and viewing things. It's not just one set uh, way. There's always things that we can do to so that everybody is happy, not just one person is getting their way. There's other people who have a different take on it, and it's okay that they have their take on it too. It's not... So, yeah, getting them, and I just realized this week that um, there are some students who are still having a bit of a time with it, but there's some students who really are getting it. Like, if somebody's not having a good day, we won't force them to play with you kind of thing. We go look for somebody else to play with, you know. And then maybe when he's okay about what he... Maybe he might be sad about something. Maybe something happened before he got here, like couldn't find his favorite um, shirt or whatever, you know. So depending on how their day is going really depends on how 
what they're bringing into the classroom. So we're trying to get it, have everybody on, on the same page. It's really hard when they're not. <laughs> it's like that's where all the conflict comes in. Um, yeah, it's it's fun, but when they do have the balance, is when they do get it. You know, when they oh, so. If so and so doesn't want to play with me today, I can go play with somebody else, and it's okay. <laughs> you know, so it's just having them, helping them, guiding them through that whole process of getting along with one another. At the same time, um, learning to to read is a big thing for me. So literacy is something that I really focus hard on in the class. It's so important for them to have that found reading foundation built like the sounds of the phonics the sounds of the the um letters so that they can um go into grade one just starting to read or i think i had la one student last year who was reading by the time he left my class and that was a first for me it was a real real big thing and it was that's what made me try even harder to so this year my goal is two students <laughs> so yeah it's um it can be really uh like you can you can go in other directions uh when you're teaching because you have to be at that level where all the students are you you have your students take something away whether it be um, knowing half the sounds <laughs> to knowing all the sounds. So that's something, you know, as long as there's one or two, it's, it's okay. I, I think I've done my job as a teacher. It would be nice if I could have the whole class, but <laughs> good with the progress that I have right now because this is my going into my fifth year. So yeah, just kind of already having that um, experience with the other students and just building on that and then making it more the next year because it's always a different dynamic, set of dynamics in the classroom. Every every year it's different. You know, there's, there's either more students, less students. Um, they might come in with... Um, learning disabilities you know there's all kinds of things that you that come into play when you have a classroom full of students and meeting all their needs is is really um a uh, challenge but when you get to that um, challenging part and you start to see success is, is where the balance comes in and it makes you try harder as a teacher to want <laughs> to get to that point of, of having um, your challenges met um, and then once you get to that point you just move from there and then you can add on to the the whole curriculum so yeah so literacy culture <laughs> really big in my in my room and trying to come to an understanding that that it can work and it can you can build on it it can become more and, and it can be more um, fitting for, for everybody in the room <laughs> in the classroom um, yeah so I, I think that's kind of the the biggest thing for me at this point yeah so not to mention the Alberta curriculum is is another thing that we follow so whenever like even with math we do the Blackfoot um, numbers and um, it's kind of funny because when I was growing up I had to learn French <laughs> and um, so we do the the numbers in Blackfoot French and English so the kids, and they love it. I mean, three languages. And I was saying, we should do um, Spanish just to get them, just to let them know that there are a lot of other languages that you might encounter. So it kind of broadens their learning perspective. 
we don't just teach one thing. It's, we can teach with, you know, whatever. It's almost the sky's the limit. Let's do this. <laughs> if you know it, <laughs> then just bring it in. It's, it's okay. Yeah, so I kind of surprised myself as far as, as, should I do this? And we did it one day, and the kids loved it. So counting, and they're watching, like they watch you like a hawk. So if you miss a number, they'll let you know. <laughs> Teacher, you forgot. And it was funny because I was missing the number 16 for some reason. I said, oh my goodness, I have to brush up on my French too. <laughs> so if you don't use it, you lose it, is what I told them. So if you don't practice, it's it's you'll have to relearn it again. <laughs> so yeah, so we took, I took them through the technology part of it in the classroom, um, went online and we went on into the French dictionary and I thought this would be cool to have the Blackfoot, like just be at the tip of your fingers to be able to bring it up on screen and we can learn it that way because it had like the sound buttons and I found the number that I was missing, and I took the kids through that whole process. <laughs> they had it on the screen, and they were, yeah, it was it was fun. It was a real learning kind of thing for both me and them as well. So we found, so we problem solved. We found out where I was missing the number, and we made it good again. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, I think you've hit on the next question, okay. too, but just to ask, um, in your opinion, what makes your classroom or your curriculum an example of excellence in Indigenous education? I think it's just being open to, to whatever you can bring into the classroom and not limiting. So if there is... Um, I always find ways to fit it in. I'll always figure out something to to um, to fit 